Welcome to Using SQL Tool Belt Components with SQL Change Automation. I'm Kendra Little from Redgate Software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a very simple demo environment for SQL Change Automation. And with this environment, we're going to do some fun things with Redgate SQL Tool Belt. We're going to explore SQL Prompt. We're going to look at how SQL Compare can be used with SQL Change Automation. And we'll also look at how to automate documentation for your databases. You can set up exactly what I'm setting up here. And it's all going to start with downloading code to create a sample database from Microsoft. Here's where Microsoft has published the code for Northwind. It's on GitHub as part of the SQL Server samples. It is all contained within a single SQL script that will create the Northwind database, put some objects in it, and populate a little bit of sample data in there. To get this going, I'm just going to click on inst northwind.sql, and we will see that this SQL file is so big that, in fact, preview doesn't work. So we're going to go ahead and click the download file here. and. It'll take a second or two, but eventually all 9,000 and so lines will appear in my browser. And I can still control A, select it all, and copy it to my clipboard. Once I've got that on my clipboard, I'm going to go ahead and head into Visual Studio here. And in Visual Studio, I already have the SQL Server Object Explorer opened and connected to my private test instance. I'm always a big fan of when you're experimenting to do it in a place that no matter what havoc you wreak, no one else has to notice. So this is a SQL Server instance installed in my own virtual machine, and I can do all sorts of things without impacting anyone else. I do not have any user databases here at all, so let's go ahead and create one. I'm going to click on this new query button right here and paste in the script that I just downloaded. Now, I probably don't need 200% font on my 9,000 line script. It is 9,340 lines to be exact. I'm going to go ahead and click the execute button there. And now my database has been created successfully. I can see that in the message that came back. And if I go into Object Explorer, click on databases and click refresh. I've got that Northwind database. The scenario that we're working on, there's many ways that this can work, but let's imagine that we're in a scenario where we've got an existing Northwind database with an existing app that's in production, but we have never put the code into source control and we haven't been doing active development now. In a situation like this, I might want to just create my development database from scratch and populate my development database with the code from the production system. And that is a thing that we can do quite easily in SQL change automation. I'm going to go ahead. I want my dev database to have a specific name. So I'm going to go ahead and type create database, and let's call it Northwind dev there. So we're going to go ahead and create the database Northwind dev. It's going to be completely empty on our instance, but we're creating it. I'm just using beep beep dev for everything. So let's refresh over there. And sure enough, I now have Northwind, which was populated by that script, and I have an empty Northwind dev. And let's pretend that this Northwind database, maybe it's a uh, restored backup from production, right? Hopefully, I don't have my production environment on beep beep dev, right? <laughs> let's just, let's pretend we don't do that at Northwind. The step here to get started with SQL change automation, the first step, if you don't already have one, is to create a new SQL change automation project. So I'm going to go to File, New Project, and I want to say, hey, I want a SQL change automation project. I'm going to name my project Northwind. Of course, we can name it whatever we wanted, but I'll just name it Northwind, keep it simple. And I am using a Git repository for my code here. I'm going to keep things super easy, and I'm just going to do my commits locally. I'm not even going to configure my local repo with a remote repo or do any pushes. Of course, in the real world, we would want to do that. So let's go ahead and create the project. 
Well, my project has been created and here appears the SQL change automation setup wizard. When I'm setting up a SQL change automation project, it offers to help me out and it will let me connect to a development database. That's where I want to do my work. And optionally, it's gonna say I can connect to a deployment target. That is not to do a deployment. That is to, if I want to, create a baseline script that represents the schema of the production database. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Get Started here in the bottom corner. And since we're working in the scenario where that I there is a production database, under Deployment Target here in the wizard, I am going to specify a connection. This connection is just being used to read in information about what's in that Northwind database and generate a schema from it. So we know what is the baseline we're starting from? What is the state of production? So I'm gonna click on specify connection. And this is in my history because I have connected to this before. I have Northwind here on the beep beep dev instance. If it wasn't in there, I could browse to it. Since this is on my local machine, I would just select beep beep dev under local. And then down here, I would specify the database name there. So let's go ahead and do that and say, okay. So this is the optional database that'll just be used for reads to read in that schema. My actual development database is specified on the left here and it will create a new database for me. I just wanted to control the name of it. So I created it already. And this is the database that I will be working in when I work with SQL change automation and modifying things in my source control. Later on, when I want to deploy code, I'll be able to deploy it to the production environment if I want. But of course, before I ever go to production, I'll probably be deploying to other environments like QA. That's totally, totally fine. So I'm going to specify the connection here to the Northwind dev database. I'm going to go ahead and verify what I've got. So I've got my development environment as Northwind dev. Check. I've got my deployment target that I'm going to use to create that baseline script set as Northwind. Let's go ahead and click next. And this page just verifies what the process is going to happen. So it says we, since you, since you supplied a target, we are going to create a baseline script and it is going to represent that current schema on the Northwind database, but it's just going to read that in. We will be creating programmable objects. We'll talk more about those later. And it warns us if we have any weird dependencies that we aren't sure how to handle, we are gonna put them in a folder named unsupported. Then we are going to work on making the SQL change automation deployable to the database. What does that mean? Well, we'll see in a sec. So I'm gonna click on create baseline script and SQL change automation goes to work reading the schema of Northwind and translating that into SQL scripts. And now we, our wizard has done. It's already telling me, hey, we've got some pending scripts found and it suggests that I may want to deploy my project. But before we deploy the project, let's take a look in our solution explorer at the work that's already been done. If I take a look here, I have in my Northwind project, I've now got some folders here. Under migrations, I have a first folder that is the baseline folder. Since I specified a target database to create a baseline script, it created this script representing that state of the production database named baseline. Now looking around, I don't have any unsupported folder here. SQL change automation didn't find any unsupported changes that it can't handle in this case. Everything is nice and easy. So I am looking like I'm going to have a nice and easy baseline to work with at this point. We also have a changes folder here. And at this point, that folder is empty. As we create migration scripts, they will land in changes. I do already have items in the programmable objects folder here. We're gonna dig more into those in a later video. And I've got some objects under schema model that were all created during that import. And I've got plus signs on all these scripts indicating that I have added these scripts. Once I go back to my SQL change automation window, 
I'm going to put my object explorer to the side there to give it a little bit more real estate. And let's go ahead and click deploy. What it's doing in this deploy, I created the Northwind dev database as an empty database. What we did when we created that baseline script was SQL change automation read in the schema from Northwind. But it, what it hasn't done yet, what it is doing now is deploying scripts so that Northwind dev has the baseline that it created from Northwind. And we can see this in this output. If you enjoy reading the output of scripts like this, you can look through this and see exactly all of the steps that it did to bring the Northwind dev database up to speed with the Northwind database. And even if we were starting from a development database that was maybe a few steps behind production or different from it, SQL change automation would compare them if we had imported an initial baseline and be like, oh, you've got some things that aren't exactly the same here. So since we started from empty, it just offered us the opportunity to deploy there. Back on my change automation window now, it says, ah, I deployed that successfully. We did not have any problems with that deploying. So I can click refresh now. And what it does is it says, okay, I'm gonna check and see if you've got any changes. Oh, doesn't look like you have any changes. I now have 59 objects in sync and I can admire my objects in sync if I wish. Now I've got my environment set up and we're going to do lots and lots of testing in here. But before we move on, I should commit. So I'm gonna head down here and see that I have 38 changes in here. So I'm gonna click on that little pencil there and bring up my uh, menu to check in. And I'm gonna say, call this just initial baseline. And I'm gonna go ahead and commit all of them at once. And I can see here in the commit list, I've got the baseline script, I've got all that good stuff under the programmable objects and under the schema, the schema model, and I've got my SQL project file. So I'm gonna say initial baseline and project creation. Let's go ahead and do that and go ahead and commit all. And like I said, I'm just keeping this local for this demo, so I'm not going to push, although it is a very wise thing to back up and share your changes when you're not just learning, but we're just learning in this one. So we're gonna go ahead and head on to our next demo.